What's going on, YouTube? It's Red the Wiz back with another video. And today we're going to talk about should you join the United States Army in 2024? Oh, hell no. All right. So as you currently see, I am currently sitting inside my car. So uh, I am back on post. I did go home for the holidays. But um, as of right now, I'm back on post. I would, like I said, I would do this inside my room, but I do have a roommate and my neighbor is back in the barracks for some reason. So I do have two people on both sides of me to my left and to my right. And I don't want them to hear what I'm talking about, especially on this type of topic, if people should actually join the military or not. Um, I don't really trust them. So they might go snitch to their superiors. Talking about, oh, he's trying to discourage people from joining the military, anti-government type shit. <laughs> Nah, that's not the case. So we're going to do this vlog here right inside my vehicle where I should have the most uh, privacy as of right now. Um, if you can't tell, I am kind of really slouched down in my seat because I don't have any rent. I don't have any uh, window tint. Um, I do. It's the legal tint for my state, which is 32. But um, I did have 5%, uh, but uh, I got pulled over for that and I got forced to take it off. I don't think I made a video on that. Um, but that happened like many months ago and I've yet to put any darker tint on my car, but, um, that's besides the point of this video. So yeah, let's just get right into it. All right. So, uh, should you join the army in 2024? Now I say army instead of the military as a whole, because I am currently enlisted into United States army. So I can't speak on any other branch like the Marines, the Navy, the air force, uh, the Space Force now all of a sudden. So I can't really speak on any other branch besides the Army because the Army is the only branch of military that I have experience in. So I can only speak on be I, I can't really say speak on behalf of the Army, but I can really speak for myself on my experience currently inside the United States Army, if that makes sense. So should you join the Army in 2024? Uh... That kind of really depends on your current situation and what you have going for yourself. So a little bit backstory on my experience, because I know I made a video a while back ago why I joined the military. Um, I'll probably put that in the link in the description or probably like a follow up video at the end of this video. Um, I kind of really forgot what I said back then, but if I remember correctly, I first joined the military back in 2012 2012 excuse me 2017 that was when i was staying with my parents and i was in college and i had a little bit of job going for myself but then my dad got tired of me staying with them so he basically either joined the army or just get kicked out so unfortunately he pretty much forced me to go into the army i didn't have much of a choice I was almost done with my associate's degree at the time. And I also had a job. The only thing that I think that was really bugging him was that I didn't have a car of my own. And he got tired of me uh, basically asking for a ride at 5 a.m. in the mornings, like some insane hours while he was still working. He was trying to sleep and whatnot. And, you know, I basically uh, I was pretty much using up his resources. So I got forced into the military. Right. So the military back in 2017 up to 2023 or 2024 as of right now is a totally different era of military. I can tell you that right now. It's a totally new different era of military. Um, as far as my reasoning, beside, outside of my dad, uh, I kind of really didn't have a place to stay of my own. So I was, I mean, what else was I going to do? Like worm the streets, be homeless? I wasn't trying to be homeless. So that's, I guess that's like one motivation to join the military, right? Depending on the government for pay, right? So that's one reason why I joined the military. The second reason is because I kind of really needed some extra assistance to uh, get money quicker at that time. So those are mostly my two main reasonings why I joined the army. I didn't really join it for any type of educational benefits or it. Um, anything of that nature. I really just joined because I didn't have nowhere. I didn't have a place to stay. I needed some extra money to get my own place. So I didn't want to depend on my parents any longer. I want to be dependent. I want to be um, independent. I want to do everything um, not by myself, but I want to um, not depend on my parents anymore. If, if that kind of really makes sense. So that kind of motivated me to join the United States Army back in 2017. 
Now, um, the question is, should you join the army in 2024? Like I said, it kind of really depends on, um, it kind of really depends on you as a person and, um, what's kind of really going on right now, economically, or what's going on around the world globally. Uh, cause see 2017, I joined in peace times right now is January 2nd, 2024 at the time of this video recording. Um, we are probably no longer going to be in peacetime. And I could say that's like perfect timing because I got six months left. <laughs> so my contract is about to be over with. I'm not extending no more. I'm not re-enlisting. I'm not renewing my contract. I'm done. I have a set plan. Once I get out, I should have more than enough money to get my own place. I'm good. The army has helped me get, the army has helped me reach my goal to a certain extent. Now, um, like I said, it brings back to what you want to do and what your current situation is. Everybody's situation is different. Your situation may not be the same type as mine where I didn't have a place to stay at the time. I get kicked out. I'm homeless. You may actually have a home. You may actually be staying with your parents or you could have a family. You have a place to stay. You have a you have a car. You have a job. You got a nice you know, you have nice things, you have money, right? But it's probably not enough. So you're probably going to join the army, depend on the government to get some of the extra pay. Now, this is my own personal and professional opinion. I'm telling you this right now. This is my own personal and professional opinion. If you want to join the military in 2024, given what's happening globally right now, uh, you got wars kicking off in Israel. I think Germany, Germany as well. You got Israel trying to kick off. You got North Korea trying to kick off. Uh, you got some other places I can't think off the top of my head that's about to kick off. So you got to think about that from 2024 and on forward. You got to think about that. If you don't want to go to war and experience combat, joining the military in the United States is probably not your best bet. Like, I would just stay home. <laughs> like, I will just stay home. But if you have no problems like me going to war or face a combat, because I have no problem with that at all. It's just that I have done what I need to do in the army. There's no need for me to stay. But if you have no problems going to war, going to combat, sure, by all means, serve your country. Be, pa be patriotic. I mean, like, <laughs> don't let me stop you. But, um... You really need to dig deep. Why do you really want to join the army? And do not let these recruiters um, influence you. They'd be like, oh, the army is great. Well, we'll give you a sign-on bonus, a $20,000 sign-on bonus, a $10,000 sign-on bonus. I've heard people get like 80,000 sign-on bonus. What? Which is completely absurd. I guess it kind of really depends on the... Uh, occupational specialty that you choose which also depends on your ASVAB score um uh, which I guess I'll touch that I'll mention the ASVAB and later on in the video but um you really got to ask yourself should I really join the military in 2024 do I really need to join the military in 2024 or join the army in 2024 you got to ask yourself that because I can't answer that for you now I could like I said, this is my own personal opinion. If I were you sitting here watching this video right now and you're contemplating whether you should join the army in 2024, if I was sitting in your shoes right now watching this video, I would say to myself, man, he's right. There's wars breaking out outside the United States. There's a high chance that I might get deployed somewhere. I don't want to face combat. <laughs> You know, you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to go too, too dark because I understand YouTube has um, sensitivity on the platform. So I'll try not to get too, too dark on this subject. But like I said, I can't really answer this question for you. You have to decide for yourself. I wrote down a list on reasons why some people may or may not join the military. But like I said, the first one, the first reason kind of really depends on you as a person. That's solely your choice. 
another reason is, like I said, is for the pay. Some people need the extra money like I did at the time. So how much does the army pay? Well, that kind of really depends on your current rank as you go in and as you progress throughout your uh, career. <laughs> um, some people say that it's a career. To me, it's not a career for me. Like it's a job. Like it's just any other job. Now, if you want to stay in the army like over 10 years, then yeah, I would say that's a career. But for me, nah, this is not a job. I mean, it's not a career for me. It's just a everyday job. But it also really depends on what the job that you, um, your occupational specialty that you choose when you sign up. Now, how much does the army pay? Like I said, it depends on your rank once you go in. Um, as of this year, 2024 20, of January, E1, enlisted one. Uh, which is also no rank. You're an E fuzzy. We call them E fuzzies. They're private. No, um, it also depends on educational experience as well. Like the more college education you have, the more higher rank that you, uh, um, the more educational experience that you have, the higher rank you can get in. Now, if you have no military experience whatsoever and you have, let's say, an associate's degree, you can join the military as a part first class. If you have a bachelor's degree, you can join the military as an E4, a specialist. Now, um, I'm going based off of pre, uh, prior knowledge of this, so I'm not sure if any regulations have updated it whatsoever. So I encourage you to do your own research on this. So like I said, this is my own personal and professional opinion. So don't really take my word for it. I mean, this is just like... Uh, this is just really just an opinion, my honest, honestly, it's just an opinion. So as an E1, you first join no college um, education whatsoever, E1, E fuzzy. You're going to start off a base pay of 1865 That's basically really nothing, to be honest with you. Like you get paid twice. You get paid bi-weekly. And 1865 is total for that month. So you divide 1865 divided by two, that's how much you would get paid bi-weekly, every two weeks, which is basically nothing. You might as well just stay at home and work like a nine to five job at a fast food restaurant. Uh E2, enlisted two, which is still a private, but you actually have like a you have like an actual rank, like a mosquito wing, like like one up. Uh a one up rank. You'll get paid 2,261 base pay. And no college experience. That's how much you get paid per month. You divide that by two. 2,261 divided by two. That's how much you get paid by weekly. Again, that's really not much pay. You might as well just stay home and work a nine to five at a fast food restaurant or something. Um, E3, base pay. Assuming that you have an associate's degree. You'll get paid two thousand three hundred and seventy eight dollars. Like I said, divide by by uh, two. That's how much you get paid by weekly. So as a total, you'll get paid two thousand three hundred seventy eight. Um, E four. If you have a bachelor's degree, you would get paid two thousand six hundred and thirty four dollars per month. Divide that by two. That's how much you get paid by weekly. Now, for me, I'm currently an E four specialist. I do not have a bachelor's degree. I came in as what rank that I came in as because it was such a long time ago. Uh, I pretty much started from the bottom. Let's just go with that. I pretty much started from the bottom and I worked my way up to E4 specials. I first joined in 2017. Now 2024. I'm now an E4 specialist. I became an E4 specialist back in 2022, I believe. I think. 2022, I became an E4 specialist. Uh, December 1st, 2022. It was either... I don't really remember. Either it was 2020 or 2022. One of those two years, December 1st, 2020 or December 1st, 2022, I became an E4 specialist. And I have briefly became a corporal and then that's when they changed the regulations for corporal status. And I'll get on that in just a second all right so i forgot to add um the 
E4 corporal status. So you can only achieve corporal status as of right now once you complete BLC, which is basic leader course. And once you go to a promotion board and you pass, that's when you receive the rank corporal as an E4. After E4 corporal and you receive all of your promotion points, you'll then be promoted to E5 sergeant. But back then, uh, before they changed the regulation where you can only hold the rank of corporal before going to promotion board is when it's up to, I believe, either the first sergeant or your commander to determine whether they want to give you corporal at the time. It's basically got the needs of being an NCO uh, at that unit. But um, I can tell you right now, I do not get paid $2,634 per month. Like, I don't get paid that. Now, um, the amount of years that you in the army times the amount of years that you've held that rank also varies how much you'll get paid. That factors in how much you get paid. So I've been a specialist for an E4 specialist for about. Um, I want to say about over three years now, close to three years. Uh, I didn't write that portion down or how much I actually get paid, but, um, I'm not going to tell you how much I get paid, <laughs> uh, monthly, but it's more than $2,634, which is the base pay for an E4 specialist. Um, now for, hold on, let me turn on this light. It's getting dark outside. I'm going to try not to make this video too, too long because right now it's going over 15 minutes. So it's probably going to be like a 30 minute uh, video at best. And there's not going to be any cuts. So I'm not going to do too much editing on this. Um, right. So I'm moving, uh, moving along. So an E5. Nobody really joins the army as an E5, which is a sergeant. You're already a supervisor. Nobody joins the army as an E5 sergeant unless you have prior military experience as an E5 sergeant. Point blank period. Nobody joins the army as an E5 sergeant. Nobody. Unless you're prior service and you already held that rank when you got out and you came back in, that's the only that's the only time you'll be granted rank E5 sergeant going back into the army. Point blank period simple. Um So yeah, that's E1, E4. Uh, E6 through, what is it, E9. I'm not going to cover that because that's senior NCO ranks and I'm only covering E1 through E5, which is basically um, entry level into the military. Now, if you want to do further research on how much you'll get paid in the military, you can easily Google this and search it up, Military Pay Army 2024, and a whole chart will just pop up. So the housing... Nine times out of 10, when you enlist into the United States Army, um, if you're not married and, or have like a kid or something, you're going to be put into housing called barracks where you will have a roommate. Sometimes it could be one roommate. Sometimes it could be two roommates, depending on the military base and where you are. If you have more than one roommate, you got it bad. <laughs> you, you got it bad. As of right now, I have one roommate because there's only two rooms. There's only two rooms. So I have just one roommate. Um, now, if you're in the military, when you join the military, you don't have, like, you're single, not married, no kids. You will be housed in the barracks. Now, for whatever reason, somewhere in your time in the military, you let's say, for example, you get married, you have a kid, you will receive BAH, basic housing allowance, where you can move off post regardless of your rank and you can stay in your own housing. The army will give you a stipend to pay for that. Now, if you're married in the military and you're joining, but you don't have your spouses with you, then you will live in the barracks. Point blank simple. You'll live in the barracks until you reach a certain rank I believe it's E6, which is a staff sergeant. You can't move out the barracks. There are plenty of E5 sergeants living in the barracks right now. All right, I had to cut the camera to cut my car on because I didn't just want this light to just be on without the car on. I didn't want to kill my battery. 
and I just got a brand new battery, which I'm gonna make a video on that separately because I got a story for what I did over the holidays. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. But um, moving on, um, housing. I'll probably include like some photos of what you got to deal with when you get a roommate. Uh, my personal experience with having a roommate in the in a barracks and army, it kind of really depends on where you are and the roommate as well. I've had a total of three. I've had a total of three roommates since I've been in the barracks. The first roommate I had was my battle buddy from AIT. We went to AIT together. We got stationed together here in one location. So he was my roommate, right? Uh, then he moved out the barracks. He got married and had a kid. So I had the room by myself. So it was awesome. Believe me, having a room in the barracks by yourself is is phenomenal. Like you can, <laughs> you, the amount of privacy you have is fantastic until you get a roommate. But um, my second roommate, uh, completely new didn't know him until um until i actually started working with him cool dude nice guy um there were some deficiencies here and there but all around cool dude then he moved out and got relocated to another base somewhere so he um he came down on orders to go to a different location so he left and I didn't have a, room, a roommate for another year and a half, I think, maybe two years. I'm not sure. Then my third roommate, which is my current roommate right now, I'm I'm pretty sure he's like Gen Z type, 18 or 19 years old, the type of teenagers basically straight out of high school, right? Straight out of high school, don't want to do nothing, sits on the video game all day, like... He doesn't do anything. The dude barely cleans. He barely cleans up after himself. That's the, yeah, that's the type of people, the type of roommates you got to deal with in the military. Sometimes you have a great roommate. Sometimes you have like a very bad roommate. Like I currently have right now a bad roommate. He doesn't clean up after himself. I always have to go behind him and clean up his mess. Um, he doesn't know to, a good example, Military barracks. I'm sure you've heard about them having like mold, black mold in the barracks. That is 100% true. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? We do have mold in the barracks, but at the same time, it depends on the soldiers who are living in the barracks. Me, however, I know better because it's basically pure science. Good example. You take a shower, right? A hot steaming shower with the door closed. There is no fan in there. So you don't have ventilation. You take a shower, a hot steam shower for like 15, 30 minutes, right? Tell me why you get out of the shower and you close the door right back and then not letting that steam or moisture out of the bathroom. What is that gonna do? That's gonna cause condensation. What, what, do, what happens to condensation in a closed, warm, moist room? It causes mold, right? So every time I get out of the shower, I leave the door wide open so that can basically evaporate, dry up. My roommate does the complete opposite. He gets in the shower, closes the door, a steamy shower, gets out the shower, closes the door right back. And it wonders why there's mold growing on the walls. It's because you don't ventilate the bathroom once you finish taking a shower. That's why. So those are the type of people you got to deal with when you live in the barracks. If you're like 25 years old or older, like how I am, I'm 29, and you get paired up with a teenager, <laughs> you're basically going to become their parent. I'm not going to hold you. You're basically going to become their parent because I'm a, I'm an E4 specialist. He's currently um, an E3 prior for his class. So I outrank him in any way possible. And if he becomes a specialist, I have more time and grade as a specialist, so I still outrank him. I'm a senior specialist to him, so I still outrank him. But it's it's the age problem. That's 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 the problem. It's the age problem. So if you're like me, you're over 25 years old, you get paired up with a teenager, what do you think is gonna happen? That teenager ain't gonna do not too much of anything. Eat, sleep, play video games all day from like from 
early morning to some insane hours at nighttime. You're trying to sleep knowing full well you got to go to work in the morning the next day. That's what you got to deal with every day. Every day. And there's limited rooms in these barracks, so there's no moving. You got to deal with it. So like I said, basically you become their parent. You're not my dad! So moving on. What will you do in the military? Or what would you do in the army? Um, like I said earlier, it depends on the type of job that you choose, which also depends on your ASVAB score. The higher your ASVAB score, the more job opportunities you have available to you. So say, for example, you score a total of a 32 on the ASVAB, you're not going to have a lot of opportunities for you. So if you score, like, say, like um, an 80 or a 90 on ASVAB, you'll probably have like pretty much almost every job in the army available to you. But there are subsections to the ASVAB, though, if I remember correctly, because I haven't taken it since 2017. So I don't know how they do it now. It really depends on the total score of your ASVAB. So the higher your ASVAB score is, the more job opportunities you have. The lower your ASVAB score, you, 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 like your job opportunities, your job opportunities is going to be limited. All right, moving on. How long do you have to stay in the army? Like I said, that kind of really depends on, uh, that depends on you. That depends on how long you want to, how long your contract is for. Some of these recruiters will by default try to sign you up for like three to four years. Some of them will try to push you eight years. Some of them will try to convince you to do like 10, 20 years. Don't do that. Like, don't just go straight off the recruiter. Do your own research. Go talk to a veteran. Come talk to me because I'll tell you straight up. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. I'm going to tell you straight up. Go go talk to multiple recruiters. And if they all sing the same song, then all right, then maybe it's something solid. If you want to take an opinion, go talk to a veteran, any veteran. Can you give me some advice on joining the military? But don't do it. Just don't do it. You do not join because you're basically screwing yourself. If you're going to join just for money, don't do it. There are plenty, a plethora of ways to earn money outside the army. Welcome to the real world. It's just not worth it. But if you're solely set on joining an army, go get like a second opinion. Talk to multiple recruiters and go talk to a couple of vets. They'll get you straight. The minimum, I, if I remember correctly, the minimum that a recruiter would sign you up for would be either two to four years at a time. Two to four years at a time for a contract. Can you break your contract early? Yes, you can. You absolutely can. You can leave the army at any given time. You want to know how it's called refusal to train. If you want to try out the army, see if it's good for you. If it's not good for you, leave in basic. Don't wait till AIT or until you get to your first duty station. You're like, oh, I don't like this. I want to go home. Because not only are you screwing yourself, you're also screwing over your peers. Please do not do that. If you don't like the army, Make the decision to leave during basic training because that is the easiest way that you can leave. Basic training because the United States government spends thousands of dollars. I don't know the exact number, but they spend over a hundred thousand, I believe. Is it twenty five thousand or some something like that? Twenty five thousand per uh, per individual per soldier or something like that. I don't know the numbers, but they spend thousands of dollars on an individual to get you trained to become a soldier. Do not waste their time. Definitely do not waste your time. If it's something that you do not want to do, leave during basic training. The easiest way to do it is refuse to train. Drill sergeant, I do not want to be here no more. I refuse to train. Just simple as that. They'll get you taken care of. All right, moving on. Let's see. Do you get holiday breaks? Yes, you do. You also can take uh, breaks or leave of absence throughout the year. As of right now, I'm just about to come off of holiday block leave for holiday uh, for the holidays, for Christmas holiday. So yes, you do get breaks in the military. You can take leave whenever you want, as long as you have those leave days. Those leave days um, populate every month. You get 2.5, two and a half days every month. So 2.5 times 12, is whatever number that is because I don't feel like doing quick math. That's how many days of leave that you can that you have um, per year. So if you save your leave, you can take 
30 days worth of leave if you want to. I think the maximum is 30 days. But if you have like a an emergency or a definite family or something like that, you can take more than just 30 days worth of leave. Uh, do you have to exercise in army? Obviously, yes. However, I do encourage you to already be somewhat physically fit before you decide to join the army because if you're like a couch potato, pretty much Gen Z, just sitting around on the video games all day doing nothing, don't exercise, just couch potato, you're going to have a hard time in the army and drill sergeants will be in your face 24-7. Um, I do encourage you to work out at least, I wanna say a month at the very most one month before you actually ship to basic training just so you can get physically fit there are some recruiters out there who will train you to become physically fit um because you in the army you will ruck in basic training and ait you will do a foot ruck for who knows how many miles i know i've did 12 miles it's it's a piece of cake um but like i said it it varies on each different individual so if you're not physically fit already or somewhat in shape you're going to have a, a tough time so i do encourage you to exercise every day at least a one month out before you ship to your basic uh moving on can you have electronics during basic training ait this is probably the most commonly asked question hell no back in 2017 we did not have electronics cell phones any of that sort during our basic training or AIT. We didn't have none of that. We had iterations we were allowed to call home for a total of five minutes and then that's it. Phone's off, put it back in the bag, it's done. Now, nowadays, um, unless you're prior service, like say for example, I'm in the military still right now, I'm still active duty for another six months <laughs> that is bye bye <laughs> but um as of right now i'm currently active duty so say for example in the next six months i get out right and say for example another six months go by i decide to come back in i would be considered as prior service prior service would have some sort of special um i won't say treatment for lack of better words i would say treatment yeah lack of better words treatment prior service will have uh special treatment because they've been in the military before they will have access to their personal cell phones at certain times during the day. Obviously, during class, you will not be able to use your cell phone. Um, but if you're just now joining the, the army, currently being enlisted, you will not have access to your cell phone, especially during basic training or AIT. Once you get to your first duty station, you will have all the time in the world to be on your cell phone, your laptop, computer, your game console, whatever you have it. You have all the time in the world for it. But during basic training and AIT, you will have very limited access to your cell phone, to your smart device or electronic device or whatever you may bring. However, I strongly disencourage you to bring um, electronic devices other than your cell phone. You can bring your laptop, uh, correction, I do not encourage you to bring your laptop, your game console, your tablet, your smartwatch. I disencourage you to bring any of that to basic training or AIT because there's probably gonna be very limited storage where you can actually store that. So I kind of really just recommend bringing one smart device if you have two phones for whatever reason. Like I got multiple phones, I got more than three. So at the time of basic training AIT, just bring one electronic device and that should just be a smartphone so you can call home to your family and let you know that you are alive, you're well, you're still in training, graduation day is this and that, blah, 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 blah. That's what I recommend. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up because I'm pretty sure this is well over 30 minutes. I'm gonna try and chop it down to somewhere around 30, 35 minutes, if not under than that. So uh, if you have any further questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. So thank y'all so much for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, share that, share this video, turn on bell notifications so you can uh, get notified once I post a new video. Uh, my next video, I will be pretty much talking about what I did over 2023 Christmas holiday break. Man, do I have a story for y'all. Like, I I have no words. But I will explain it all in my next video. So, 
Also, I do have an online store. It will be in the description. So if you want to buy some merch, I will be updating my store pretty soon. So I'll be selling to some different items. So if you want to buy some merch, the link will be down in the description below. So thank you all so much for watching. We're getting close to 500 subscribers. So please share this video, like it, so I can get past the YouTube algorithm, so I can get to that 500 mark, so I get that YouTube partnership program. Thank you all so much for watching. And now... I'll catch y'all in the next video.